Welcome back. You're watching Showdown. Now, in a moment, I'm going to be crossing to Michael Kroger, uh, who is very good friends with Alan Jones. I'm very interested to hear what his thoughts are, not just, quite frankly, on what Alan Jones has just done in recent days, um, but the litany of other facts about him in terms of disgraces that he's had over the course of a career in broadcasting, many of which I think have been too often papered over by people who, and I don't include Michael Kroger in this, by the way, but people, particularly politicians, that have been keen to suck up to him because of some fear uh, that he wields a certain amount of power. And the same goes for a lot of people in the media that haven't been prepared to take on Alan Jones. Well, I think it's high time people do take him on because everybody makes a mistake. And had Jones apologised genuinely for the mistake he made, and let's not lose sight of what that was, he said that Julia Gillard's father died of shame. Now... I think about this in a particular way, and I think this is important for viewers to know this, because it's been no secret in recent days that I've certainly gone on a little bit about my view about the shamefulness that is Alan Jones. Now, when I lost my father as a young man, if I think about this, the thing that gets me is if he had done what he did to Julia Gillard to me, yes, it would hurt me for him to have done that to me, but the part that really makes me upset and makes me angry is just how Julia Gillard's mother must feel right now. And I think it's important for all of us to think about what Alan Jones did in the context of how any one of us would feel had our father died and had Alan Jones said about him, our father, what he said about Julia Gillard's father. And then think about how we would feel as a protective son or daughter of our mother and the one who is going through the grief of having just lost the most loved person in your life, other perhaps than your child. Now, that really, I think, is important, to put the disgrace and the shame of Alan Jones in context. But it goes further than that. Because, as I say, society is a lot more forgiving than people often realise. And if Alan Jones genuinely came out and apologised genuinely, rather than turned his apology part into attacks on Julia Gillard, part into justification part into obfuscation by blaming those around him. Apparently this was mentioned at a party that he was at earlier that day. He doesn't even have the guts to own his own remarks. If he hadn't done all of that, and if he'd just had a genuine apology, it would have been much easier to say, oh well, it's a terrible mistake and he deserves to be condemned for it, but we should all move on. Well, I'm not moving on from this and I don't think anyone should, because the apology has not been sincere, the act was terrible, and if we personalise this to how any one of us would feel, I think that puts it into context. And the whole saga has given me cause to think back on Alan Jones's career. It's a career of regularly being sued and losing on counts of defamation, regularly being hauled before the relevant media authorities for having failed to meet basic standards that anyone in broadcasting should meet. It's a career that saw him taking cash for comment, where he was basically selling out the very people that he claims to be the fighter for, the battlers. And yes, in between all of that, the paradox that is Alan Jones is that he spends an inordinate amount of time fundraising. Well, my wish would be that he spent a little bit more time doing that, freeing up his diary, as it were, by getting off the airwaves and doing everyone the favour of just that. Michael Kroger, joining us out of Melbourne. I know you're good mates with Alan Jones. Pardon my rant on that. Thanks for joining me. It was a rant, yes, Peter. Well, it might have been a rant, Michael, but what would it actually take for you not to consider Alan Jones a great Australian? Well, look, his remarks were completely inappropriate, um, Peter. Uh, no, one, no one disagrees with that. Not a single person disagrees with that. Except but for Alan Jones. You can't... Well, no, 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 he's given unreserved apology, ha- for oh, He has sake. not given I mean, an wait, unreserved Peter, apology. That's just garbage. Absolute he said, garbage. Anyone that says that that's an unreserved apology... It's a, a, it was a 45-minute press conference that was more justification than apology. It was an opinion Peter, article you, in the Daily Telegraph that was more throwing the blame on somebody that made the remark at a party beforehand. If that's an unreserved apology, then life's going to take a long time to get through because it took him a long time to say unreservedly, I'm sorry. Peter, did you hear his remarks this morning on Radio 2GB? In between him saying how victimised he was by the media, I certainly did. Right. He said his apology was without qualification. Without qualification. How many days did it take him to get to that? One. 
took him well, it took him a bit more than that. But uh, is it better? Look, let, you know, let, let, you don't like Alan Jones. Okay, let's be frank about that. You no, don't no, no, like that, that's Alan. actually not true. You're Alan... jealous of it. You're, you're jealous of Alan. You don't <laughs> like Alan. So let's let's Alan put all Jones this other is someone nonsense. that I'm not sure how many people would be no, jealous no, of. Let's be frank. No, no, you don't. You don't like him. Okay, let, let's be serious. With you. you don't like Alan Jones. You're jealous of Alan Jones. And what am I jealous you know, of? His remarks were. Well, you've had your go. His remarks were entirely, completely, and utterly inappropriate. Right? No one disagrees with that proposition. He should never have said that. However, he has apologised, as many people do when they make serious mistakes in this country, whether it's publicly or privately said things, he's apologised. What do you think, think of his first attempt at an apology I, I, when he had the press well, conference? Hang on, we, we've just been through that. I think what's upsetting a lot of people on the conservative side of politics now today mm. is how this is now being milked by his opponents. You read the article by Greg Hunt, the fine article by Greg Hunt in the paper this morning, where Hunt basically points out the utter hypocrisy of people in the Labor Party who have said the most shameful things. You go back to Alexander Downer's comment this morning on radio where Downer said that many, many, many years ago, his father, who'd spent over three three years in a prisoner of war camp, was described as a coward by his opponents. This is a long history of Labor Party people attacking Conservatives and, and never, and ever apologising. Never apologising. Right, Steve I'm, Gibbons, I'm to get to the member... Hang on, let me finish. Steve Gibbons, who's the member for Bendigo, calls his own former leader, Kevin Rudd, a psychopath. Now, hmm. a psychopath is someone with a chronic mental disorder a vi- and a violent social behaviour. It's a disgraceful was Nicola remark. Roxon, I agree with Was you. Nicola Roxon out there in the public domain criticising Julie Julia Gillard for being associated with the comments of one of her you know, MPs. No. The Labor Party are grossly hypocritical about this type of thing. Of, Alan of course was they completely are, wrong. Of course they are, but I'm but not talking to you a, about what the Labor well, Party said, you talk, Michael. Why don't you well, ever talk about these other things? I'll tell you why. Well, I do talk about them regularly. You've got to watch Sky News more. But the well, thing I is, do. But, hang, but, well, but then, 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 about... you, then you know that I talk about them. But I'm here talking to you about Alan Jones and you're trying to obfuscate on his behalf by talking about the shame of what Labor have done over and over again, which I've certainly talked about and I'll be badgering Ed Husick about it again tonight a little bit later. But I'm asking you specifically about Alan Jones. Now, at his press conference when he made his first attempt at an apology, did you think that was adequate or did you, did you think it was important that he changed the way that he delivered that today on Morning Radio? Oh, goodness me, we analyse, analyse every second. The guy has said he's given an unreserved apology to the Prime so you Minister. Haven't answered, he should not, never you, have, said, the, should what, never have what, said those remarks. Of course he shouldn't have. He but, should never have said and, that. And I don't doubt that he's very apologetic that he got caught, but that's not the point. When he made the original attempt at an apology at that press conference, what did you think of that as opposed to on morning radio this morning? Well, I didn't see the full 45 or 52 minutes. Um, I saw the news extracts. I saw some journalists say it wasn't sufficient. Um, I admit I didn't see the full... I didn't sit down and see the full 50-odd minutes of his press conference. All I saw, heard was this morning that he made it very, very clear that he was uh, giving an unreserved apology to the Prime Minister. Unlike Peter, I might add, Julie Gillard, who, who, who likened... Um, who likened Tony Abbott in the Parliament to Jack the Ripper, a homicidal murderer and a sexual predator. Was there an apology for that? Has Chris Bowen apologised for his remarks, the, 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 the remarks that his wife passed on? I mean, where, where is the Labor Party coming from in relation to this? They're trying to milk this for whatever it's worth. And for Nicola Roxon to say, oh, Tony Abbott's associated with these remarks, Tony Abbott's associated with his own remarks, which were a very, very but fine Michael, speech look, I'm in on the, the Parliament, same, I'm on the same saying page. something about... Uh, saying something about Julie Gillard's late father. That's the, they uh, are the remarks that Tony Abbott has associated with. And what people are really starting to get annoyed about is how this is being milked for deeply, deeply cynical political reasons by people like Nicola Roxon, and, who, who and, are doing and no I agree, credit and to her look, side. And, and I agree with you about that. I think that the way that the Labor Party have approached this, they've gone over the top. Uh, I think that there have been plenty of other examples of people, whether it's commentators like Catherine Devaney, who says disgraceful things about Tony Abbott, whether it's people like Bob Ellis, who has said shameful things, frankly, about the death of Julie Gillard's father, uh, or like what we're supposed to be talking about, Alan Jones, uh, and what I believe was poor remarks by him as well. But it is a simple fact that that side of it is an obfuscation by Alan Jones supporters, the few that are left, clearly you're one of them, uh, from his remarks and his unacceptable attempt at an apology. You, you may not have seen his press conference yesterday. Did you read the apology that he put in the Daily Telegraph, uh, which was pretty much a, a mirror version of that press conference before he went on Morning Radio today? Did you get a chance to look at that? Yes, I did. But look, Peter, let's be frank. Did, you did don't that, like that Alan Jones. That's why, we, that's why we're going on about Alan Jones. Let's go on to Julia Gillard's comments about Tony Abbott. Let's no, get no, on to no, Mark no, Drake's no, comments let's, let's deal likening with you Tony Abbott like, to an art. Let's deal with why you think I don't like Alan Jones. But, why, but why do you why, say why that? Aren't you, why, 
why are you concentrating this whole program on Jones? Why, why don't you have a program on, you know, outrages uh, perpetrated by members of the Labor Party against coalition people over the years? Why aren't we talking okay, about all we'll of do, those we'll things? Do exactly why that. do you just concentrate we'll do, on we'll Jones? We'll do exactly that next Tuesday, Michael Craig. You can come back on the show. I'm happy to do a show on exactly that. But, but for why now, is it only about talking... Jones tonight? Well, because Jones said what he said, and that was the topic of the week, and that's what I've said that I was going to make this show about. So I've got no problem with that. But just but deal why aren't just... you concentrating I, I... on some of Julie Gillard's remarks I, I, I just about get, her proponents. I just want to get down to the spiteful hissing of you claiming that I'm somehow jealous of Alan Jones. Well, why do you say that? Well, you're talking about... What am I jealous of? Comments made, hang on, you're talking about comments made by public figures, in a, totally and grossly inappropriate comments made by public figures, Peter. Why would you just concentrate on Jones? Why what what am I jealous of? I'm just in, said by, you said it, said I'm just Paul, asking what it is. What am Paul, I jealous of? Well, why would you dedicate a whole program to this issue? It's been done to death all day today, all day yesterday. I think now there are some other issues in relation to this which needs looking at. That, such that, that's, as... not, that's not an unfair point, but I'm asking about what you said before. You said I'm jealous of Alan Jones. Why do you think I'm jealous of him? Uh, well, I'll let you be the judge of that, Peter. But, You're the um, one that raised a lot it. Of, well, because there's a lot of political opponents of Alan Jones who are just using this to milk outrage against Alan. But, but um, you know, let, let's, be frank, I, let's be frank about. Let's be frank about. Take of? Catherine Devaney. So Catherine Devaney, um, who's, who's a leftist, who, 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 who's allegedly outraged, or alleged, she's outraged by what Alan said. A, a person who, who wished cancer on her own former editor, she tweeted. A, a person yeah, who she's said, a disgrace. A 14 year old beyond girl, belief. she hopes someone she, has she, late. She's a disgrace also, she, beyond belief. But why am I jealous of Alan Jones? And she, and she, and she, and she now says to her sponsor, she now says to one of Alan's sponsors, Harvey Norman, I'm going to boycott you. So I think what people are upset about is this orchestrated outrage by a lot of people on the left against a political opponent. There is absolutely no question uh, that Alan did, did the wrong thing. But let's keep the whole debate in perspective. He is not the only person to have said something the outrageous in 2012 or in the years past. Gough Whitlam made an outrageous remark 30 years ago about J.O.B. Elke Peterson, said he was a Bible-bashing bastard, which was a deeply offensive remark. Um, did anyone you know, call on Whitlam to uh, resign? I was a, I was a little, I was a little young to call remark? on Whitlam to resign. Sorry about that, Michael. But uh, on, on the issue of me, but, I mean, well, I, I, guess, young. I, I guess here's, here's the issue. You've decided to try to defend your mate Jones by doing something that he's actually quite good at, no, Peter, which is I'm hurling, not which is, him. Which is hurling Peter, abuse at me. No, no, but you're, up, you're trying to say that yourself. I'm not entitled I'm to attack him because I'm jealous of to, him and because I hate entitled. him or something to that effect. But that's, that's what you said before. I'm, I'm quoting yeah, your you words like back Alan, you. It's well known. You don't like Alan. Why don't you we, think we, I we like Alan Jones? Could it be because of his spiteful hissing on radio? Could it be because he turns around and he's someone... And I'm happy to own up to this. He never talks about this. Alan Jones, Michael Craig, you probably know this, used to get me on his show all the time because he thought that I was a fellow ideological traveller. So he'd get me on and then he'd, you know, talk about what a great young professor I was from WA. And the minute I had the temerity to have a brain of my own and say the odd thing that he doesn't agree with, then, yes, he started spitefully hissing at me on his radio show. Now, nine out of ten people that he does that to, Michael Kroger, back down down. They try to have a coffee with him. They try to fix it up. I think the bloke's a disgrace. I didn't do any of that. I thought, guess what, Alan Jones? I've got a microphone too, and I'm going to keep on using it. Now, that's a separate issue, though. Him and I have had plenty of spats in the past. That is true. On this front, do you not believe me when I say, after my dad died, I thought in the context of that happening about how I would feel were I in Julia Gillard's position now with Alan Jones coming out with what he came out with in relation to my dead father. That's what is driving me on this one. Nothing to do with anything else. I would be absolutely disgusted. And I'm also disgusted that you would claim that the apology was anything near acceptable. It was an apology laced with justification and laced with continuing attacks. Uh, well, Peter, I don't know what to make of your remarks. Um, uh, you know, the guy gave an unreserved apology. Oh, if that is an um, unreserved we'll apology, I must, like, seriously... It was on radio this morning. Peter, it was on radio this morning. Wake up to yourself. He was said it on the radio this morning. In between I mean, a million what, callers what, what, what saying what a disgrace it is that he's getting vilified. Do you want us to go back in time and um, you know relive the execution of Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu and add, add, a, add a third seat for Jones? Is that what you want? Do you, you want no. Alexander Downer said this morning, you know, we should hang the bloke. He made a, oh, he, he made a very inappropriate remark and he apologised. You seem to want to go on and on about this, linking, linking his remarks in, in some way to how you would feel in, in relation to death. I mean, when my father died too, right? You're not, you're not alone in these types of I'm pretty you know, sure deeply, I'm not alone deeply on that. personal... 
deeply personal, you know, events that happen during your life. My point to you simply is, I think this is now being milked by Jones's opponents for deeply cynical political reasons. That's what I'm saying to you tonight. Oh, and I, and I don't disagree with that, but I guess my point is that... Oh, you don't been, disagree? No, you, you agree oh, with that, do you? No, I, I agree with that. I think that his political so, so opponents who are, the, are certainly well, okay, so who, milking it. The Labor so Party, are, no question they are. And I, and I think the they're people also... Who are deeply... And I think who are they're the also definitely people running who are then that, milking this? Well, there, there's no question that it's been milked by the government, and I actually think that they're also trying to milk it by relating it back to Tony Abbott. There's no question about that. I don't disagree with that. Peter, after 15 minutes, we're now on the same page, my friend. Yeah, well, on that issue, we are. I mean, you look at what Nicola Roxon said. I mean, Nicola Roxon, goodness me, you wheel Nicola Roxon out. She tries to bridge too far, saying, you know, Tony Abbott's linked with Ethan Marks. Tony Abbott is not linked with Ethan Marks. Yeah, and I agree. And after the break, Michael Kroger, I'm going to talk to Ed Husick, uh, amongst others on our panel, about that very issue, because I agree that the Labor Party's uh, well and truly gone too far on that issue. But don't, don't doubt my genuine and disgust at Jones, and if you think that's an unreserved apology that he's given, well, seriously, uh, then no, you know, we know you don't much... like Alan. We know, oh, we know God, you're disgusted by him. We Peter, we understand well, that. You've you made know, that look, point know, three times. I know that you're prepared to MC a function and say what a great broadcaster he is, despite cash for comment, the repeated people that he's gone and defamed and been proven to have in a court of law, despite the comments that he made about the Cronulla riots, despite the remarks he's made about Aboriginal Australians. I realise all of that uh, as well, um, but I guess we just don't agree on that issue. Anyway, well, Michael, Peter, I'm sorry, he's done more for Aboriginal Australians, I think, during his lifetime, and you have, my friend. Well, it may well you be wouldn't the case. Know any, you, wouldn't, you, you wouldn't know anything about, but you wouldn't know anything about that, Peter. Well, no, I wouldn't. You wouldn't know I what would he's actually, done. You I, wouldn't I, know for what he's done for a lot of young Australians. Well, Michael Kroger, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have any idea. Unfortunately for Alan Jones, we all know a little bit less about all the good things he does because of all the dumb things he says on TV and on radio as a broadcaster. Because he undermines all of his good work by his spiteful, hateful hissing that he regularly does. But luckily for him, he's got mates to look after him. Michael Kroger, thanks very much for joining us. We all do dumb things, Peter, even you. Some more than most, and I think you'd agree your mate Alan Jones is one of them. Anyway, Michael Kroger, you've been a good sport. I appreciate you having a robust discussion, let's put it that way, on, uh, on Showdown. Thanks for your company. Pleasure. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, the panel. We'll be talking about Alan Jones. See you then.